Good morning. I love watching that, uh, that video because uh, it's a sunrise here over the church. And uh, the song is saying, don't let the, de- de- let the devil know not today, not today. You're not going to get in this house today. So I know I mentioned good morning. I'm Pastor Danny. Uh, it is, when you're watching this, it is Sunday morning. Now, for those of you that are looking closely, uh, it's pretty obvious that this was not recorded before I went on vacation uh, because I've got a little bit of a sunburn. And so, yes, this is live or recorded from the corner of Epworth and Lincoln. It's Saturday night, but it's being played on Sunday morning. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. You notice probably if it was first service, a little bit more upbeat music uh, to kick things off. It's kind of a, a blended thing. Each worship service will have their own music uh, for the traditional worship service. We'll have traditional hymns uh, and then some different uh, hymns for the uh, 10 o'clock contemporary. But, uh, but we'll be watching this morning, worshiping together. Uh, and so I welcome you uh, to worship this morning. So let's worship our Lord in song. I've been running in circles, jumping the hurdles, 
Getting caught in that rush of doing so much I'm feeling kind of worn out All this checking the boxes Trying to be flawless Has me spinning my head Catching my breath Too afraid to slow it down I tell myself to keep this up That God wants more than just my love But I've been complicating things It's just like me to overthink you Gotta keep it real simple Keep it real simple Bring everything right back to ground zero Cause it all comes down to this Love God and love people We're living in a world that keeps breaking But if we want to find a way to change it It all comes down to this Love God and love people Oh, this is freedom This is freedom The keys to the kingdom Knowing life will be found when love can be loud Cause love is what it's all about I tell myself to keep this up That all God wants is just my love No more complicating things No more need to overthink Gotta keep it real simple Keep it real simple Bring everything right back to ground zero Cause it all comes down to this Love God and love people changes lives love is all we need to make things right gotta keep it real simple it's really so simple gotta keep it real simple keep it real simple bring everything right back to ground zero cause it all comes down to this love god
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together uh, and worship together. Uh, let the words that we hear today be the ones that you have for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, here we go. Today's scripture comes to us from the uh, book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 14 through 29, and it says, When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. When the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe, and they ran forward to greet him. He asked them, what are you arguing about with him? Someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I bought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak, and whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, you faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. It has often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you're able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that, that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. When he had entered into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, this kind can come out only through prayer. That's quite a story quite a story about, uh, it's got all the aspects of it. It starts out with some Pharisees or scribes that were arguing with the disciples and over some things and crowds gathering. And then this, this father comes with the son and the son is, is cleansed and, and, and healed and everything is good. And, and then the disciples, Jesus gets to tell the disciples as he often did, he would, he would go in, he would do something and then he would aside from the crowds, aside from everyone else, he would kind of explain to the disciples what had happened. And so that's happened here, but there's three key things that we need to look at here. The first, first key point is if we can believe, all is possible. We're going to kind of talk about that Philippians 4.13 thing again this morning. We'll, we'll continue to kind of visit that throughout the year, but if we can believe, all is possible. And then are we asking for something or are we asking for help? We're going to talk a little bit more about that in detail. And the third thing is that prayer and fasting, what's that all about? What was Jesus' uh, comment about prayer and fasting? And why is that important for growth in, in faith? And it's particularly important during this Lenten season that we are in. So let's, let's unpack this first about the believe. And what's this belief thing? Because, you know... A lot of times, and you've heard me say this before, is that, you know, yes, I believe, and, and folks will say, I believe, I, you know, I believe in Jesus Christ, and, and there's a historical belief in the things that happen, and then there's this belief, this faith, faith, and faith is in things unseen, or that something's going to happen uh, because it's God's will, and we, we have this, this, sometimes our belief maybe falls short of where our faith might be. And so, belief is to absolutely trust in Jesus or in God as able to aid either in obtaining or in doing something. Now, it's that word absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, to put it into perspective, there's this thing I learned about in science class a long, long time ago, you know, like, like, like when textbooks, not lap books, were the thing, right? And so there's this thing called absolute zero. And what is absolute zero? Absolute zero is, is that point uh, on this, like it's a huge thermometer, and the very bottom of the thermometer uh, is where 
all motion stops. Every little atom, everything that's happening, everything just stops happening at absolute zero. And so nothing happens. It's absolute. There's, there's, it's absolute. Absolute. No black and white. None of, it's absolute. No gray area. Here we are. It's absolute. And so absolute trust in Jesus or God to aid either in obtaining or in doing something Sometimes we fall a little bit short in that. Sometimes we fall a little bit short. And so, oh, but Pastor Danny, no, I, you know, I've got faith. I, I absolutely believe that God will do all things. Okay, all right. Well, walk into a COVID clinic with no mask on. Oh, okay. Touched a nerve there, right? No, I'm not, I am not recommending that. Okay, the numbers are looking better. Everything's looking good. Still use our caution, wear our masks and that kind of thing. But, but there's things that we, we will, will draw a line in the sand on that we won't necessarily step into that world of absolute trust. It happens often within churches. Sometimes churches are called into ministry. They're called to do something. They're called to act. God puts it right in front of them, and then they pause, and they start talking about money, and then they start talking about all kinds of other things, and then talk about, well, well, we could do this, we could do that, like I talked about last week, you know, and we, we end up not doing something, or we end up not going where God called us to do, because quite frankly, it might be our faith or our belief that's preventing us from going that far. We see obstacles. We see things in the way. We, we, we see things that we have to overcome. We see things that we have to do and that maybe we don't have control over. And, and we begin shifting the emphasis of things that are to be to ourselves. We, we, what are we going to do versus what God can do. And so it's, it's that absolute thing that gets very hard. And if there's ever any question in your mind, uh, there's a couple of different versions of the stories. There's one in Numbers, there's one in Deuteronomy about the Israelites have been wandering in the desert for 40 years and they're ready to go into the promised land and they send over 12 spies and of the 12 spies, uh, two come back saying, we have a mighty God. We are going to be just fine over there. There's, there's some big folk over there, but we're going to take them out. There's two folks that come back, two, two spies that come back and say that. The other 10 are like, man, there were some big, big people. I don't think we can do that. You know, we're not equipped for that. We can't, we can't. And talk themselves out of it uh, and paid a heavy price for that. And so it's important that, that uh, you know, we, we understand uh, the power that God has to help us uh, to do His work here uh, and to keep that as the forefront of the things that, that we do, and, and there's a way to get to there. There's a way to get to that point, and, and we're going to walk through the Scripture because it tells us all about it. So the question is, do we believe? And it, it's, a, it's, it's a fact that in finding faith, we discover really how little faith we have, because we might think we have faith, or I kind of come to faith, but then as you start to look at your life and how boldly you've acted for God in your entire life for all the things that you can do, more often than not, we talk ourselves out of doing things because we don't feel equipped to do that. We don't feel like we can do that. We don't feel like we're able to do that. And so... Uh, what we find is that we start to look to our own abilities and our own things that we can do rather than looking at what faith can do. And so we'll go a little bit deeper into this thing and we'll talk about that, you know, I, I said a couple weeks ago, Philippians 4.13, 4, right? The, the, we always add a part to that. You know, I could do all things through Christ who gives me strength except evangelism, right? That's my, that's my tagline for that because, you know, you, I, I, I use evangelism because it's just a problem of the church these days is that nobody seems to want to get out and tell the gospel story to total strangers or to tell it to anybody really uh, at the end of the day. And so uh, we've lost that as a, as a church. And I'm saying as the global church, we've lost that. And so uh, we, we put that except on it. We put accept on, on Philippians 4.13. And so the question is that we really need to reflect on is what is our comfort level 
for belief. When was the last time you stepped out, absolutely stepped out in faith? When was the last time? I think Krista mentioned something uh, in, in one of her testimonies about Peter stepping out of the boat into the water and stepping out of the water. When was the last time you got out of the boat? We need to be honest with ourselves about that. We need to be honest about because God is stretching us as a church. He's stretching, I, I know He's stretching several folks in the congregation that are being stretched, being called to greater things because they, or we collectively as a church, have exhibited a faith and small, teeny tiny steps of faith where we're being asked to make much larger steps of faith. To be able to step forward into something and the only way to go forward is to recognize our own lack of faith. Lack of faith to step out of the boat, step out into the open, and to truly take risks. And when I say take risks, I'm talking about our own calculated risks. How we as humans look at the world and how we view things and how we, we like to control everything within uh, a decision-making process and so that we've got it all tied down. And so, okay, I've got 99.9% .9 of this handled. And so now I'll let God handle that other one-tenth of a one-percent. That's my leap of faith. More often than not, that's how we typically respond. That's how we typically do things. And so, uh, how much of that really is faith, or are we willing to only have, say, 30% of things under control and still take that leap of faith? That's the question we have to have. And if we can't be honest with ourselves, if we say we're totally faithful and we're going to put everything in, the, in, in God's hands, uh, we really need to reflect on that and think about it. Think about whether that is really the case. So let's talk about this, this, this man, this father uh, who brought his son, and the word that was used there was his unbelief. Now you've got to understand, his unbelief is not a belief in Christ. It's not a, that's not what we're talking about here. Okay? Because the guy did have faith. He did have faith. He wasn't, an, he wasn't a new believer. He wasn't an unbeliever. He, he, he actually had a weakness of faith because here's the thing. He had already asked the disciples. He had asked Jesus' disciples to cure his son. So he had faith in the disciples. He had faith that they could cure it. Otherwise, he would have never asked. He came to Jesus and he asked Jesus. So the guy believes something could get done. He believes that there's, if something's going to happen. And so what was interesting was in that final request that he made, he says, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. What kind of a question is that? Right? Do you believe or do you not believe? Now, the fact is, he believed that Jesus could help him, but he also recognized, man, this is a terrible demon in my son. Nobody's been able to help him. The scribes and Pharisees that were over there arguing earlier, they hadn't helped him. Jesus' disciples hadn't helped him. And now, okay, Jesus, on the off chance that maybe you can help him, yeah, I believe. That was his original request. And then finally he shifted it, and then he realized that stronger faith is the cure. Simply asking for the cure was not the fix because he realized that in order to help his son, he had to have greater faith because he was the one making the request. The son couldn't speak. The son couldn't ask for himself. And so the father had to make the request for himself, so he had to have faith, a great level of faith. And so he asks Jesus for help with his faith. He says, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. When was the last time any of us asked God, not for something, not for uh, healing, not for any of these things, but just to simply, God, help me with... 
Help me with wondering whether you've got your hand in this or not. Help me with understanding. Help, help me to, to just believe that it's your will that's happening around us. Help me with that belief. Help us to be all in. Because in order to be all in, to get all in, we have to do this thing called prayer and fasting. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk just briefly about it. We're going to talk a little bit more about it later this year uh, as we dive into called. But uh, to get all in, we have to pray and fast. Because at the end of the day, there is a reason why Jesus was able to dismiss the spirit that was in this boy and the disciples were not. And we're going to get to that here in just a second. Prayer and fasting. Why is it important here? Why is it different? Now, you have to understand that the, the, the disciples had cast out some demons. They had done things like that. They had performed some miracles in Jesus' name and because otherwise this guy would have never come to them to try to get that done. And so they had done these things. They had performed some miracles, but this one they just couldn't get right. Why is that? Well, it's descriptive in, 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 uh, when Jesus responds that this kind of spirit requires prayer and fasting. This kind describes, uh, in this case, in this scripture, the Greek is the aggregate of many individuals of the same nature, kind, sort, or species. Aggregate. Aggregate of many individuals. So in other words, it's like a, a big negativity group, right? It's like, it's like you know, all, all of the worst things all put together that, that, that try to drag things down, that try to draw things away, that try to destroy things. It's not just a single demon. It's not just like a, a single faceted demon. It's, it's all these things together. It's a group of all the worst and so, this kind requires a very special faith to overcome, to be able to cast out that type of demon. And so that's why Jesus was able to do it. And here's the thing. See, Jesus doesn't, the story doesn't go that, that Jesus uh, stepped up to the boy uh, and he prayed for, for days on end, and he, and he went on a fast next to the boy. And No, he healed the boy in that moment. See, the prayer and fasting is not important for the act. It's not about the moment of your test of faith. It's not about the moment where things are happening, because in the moment, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, uh, you know, it's, you know, what you do during the, the game doesn't matter as, as hard, how hard you practice. It's the same thing. Because it's not important for the act, but it's important for the preparation for the act. To be prepared in that moment where our faith is tested or where we have an opportunity for our faith to be a part of God's bigger plan, then we need to be prepared for that. And a way to prepare for that is to draw close to God so all things become possible. And that is the point of prayer and fasting. See, too often in our lives, we take a, you know, we kind of got our little, you know, set routine. Maybe we do a, maybe we do a morning devotional. Uh, we read that. Uh, you know, we got our schedule. We got our schedule that we keep. We, t we, we take this time to, to do our, our, our uh, daily devotional. We have our hour on Sunday. We, you know, show up for church and, and uh, you know, Maybe it's 9 o'clock in the morning, maybe it's 8.30, maybe it's, maybe it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, right? You know, we've got those things that we do, but how much of that time is spent in a sustained fast for a day? How much of that time is spent for hours in prayer? Because this is what's important, is that the many, 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 many stories of Jesus, where did you more often than not find Jesus in the evening? He would go off to himself and pray. And so he would be off in prayer and he would fast and observe the rules and have Sabbath. And so 
those are the things that draw us closer to God. The closer we are to God, and this is the point between Jesus and the disciples, is the disciples were not necessarily spending that much time in prayer and fasting as Jesus was, and so Jesus was drawn closer uh, to God. He's as close as you can get, basically. But he still lived into that discipline of prayer and fasting. To be drawn closer to God, to be able to have just a little bit of God's power so that God could work through them in that moment and cure that little boy. But the disciples didn't sacrifice that time. They didn't spend their time in prayer. They didn't spend their time in fasting to the degree that they could have to be in a position to heal that little boy. And so the questions for us this week, the questions for us this week are, how is your Philippians 4.13 faith? What's your Philippians 4.13 faith looking like right now? Have, have you come to the conclusion? Have you accepted the reality? It goes back to that first thing where the, where the father recognized his unbelief, recognized that he had his limitations, recognized that he was falling short in the area of faith, and that he needed help with that. How is your Philippians 4.13 faith doing? Have you recognized yet that we can say that Scripture, but we fall short in it? And so are you prepared to ask for help in that? Are you prepared, as the father was, who was, wanted the best for his son and wanted his son cured, are you willing to ask for help? to strengthen your faith. And then, as part of that asking for help, are you willing to spend some time in prayer, spend more time in prayer, spend, take on a fast, spend some time fasting. If you're already fasting, are you willing to, to, to step it up? Those are the questions. Are you willing to strengthen yourself? Because that's the question. That is how you prepare for the harder tests. By drawing closer to God, which is the purpose of Lent, is to experience spiritual growth, draw closer to God for the purpose of preparing for the purpose God has for us. If we're not spending the time if we're only showing up once an hour on Sundays and maybe doing a Bible study uh, here and there, if we're not spending time one-on-one -on -one in prayer with God and spending some time depriving ourselves of something to be disciplined about a relationship with God, then we're not going to be prepared for the harder tests that are yet to come. Jesus talked about a story where someone who had, had been uh, a good steward of something uh, was, was tasked with more and more and more, and so it doesn't, never gets any easier. There's never a break. Because when the time of the harvest is, their laborers are few. And so the laborers need to be busy, and the only way that they can be productive is to be prepared for the harder tests when they come. So that when someone comes to us as disciples with a son who needs healing, we are prepared for that moment. And we are ready to do what God's will is in that moment. And typically that's determined by the level of our own faith. That's typically the limiting factor, but it is also the empowering factor. On the nights when the dark lasts a little bit longer, 
When the wind and the storm is a little bit stronger When the fear in my heart digs a little bit deeper And when my faith to stand gets a little bit weaker Where could I run to? Where could I go? Even when it feels like my world So today, as we go forth, <clears throat> be blessed, stay encouraged. I know that's, you know, it gets kind of hard sometimes to stay encouraged. We've been in this thing for almost a year to the day, but stay encouraged, pray fast, grow in your faith. Have a blessed day. Amen. Here anymore, teach me to listen. I don't want to see anymore. Give me a vision that you could move this heart to be set apart. I don't need to recognize the man in the mirror, and I don't want to trade your plan for something familiar. I can't waste a day, I can't stay the same I wanna be different, I wanna be changed Till all of me is gone, and all that remains Is a fire so bright, the whole world can see That there's something different so come and be different in me. And I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern. And I don't want to gain this world but lose what matters. 
I'm gonna be 